वेलकाम टू एन पी टी एल मुक्स कोर्स ऑन मेसिन लार्णिंग एंड डीप लार्णिंग फांडामेन्टेल्स एंड एप्लीकेशनस इन माइ लास्ट क्लास आई डिसकस द कन्सेप्ट अफ पेरामिटार एस्टिमेशन आई एक्सप्लेन टू टेक्निक्स टू पपुलर टेक्निक्स वन इज द मेक्सीम लाइकलीहुड एस्टिमेशन एंड अनदार वन इज द बेजियन एस्टिमेशन टूडे आई एम गोयिंग टू डिसकस द कन्सेप्ट अफ नन पेरामिटिक टेक्निक्स देट इज हाउ टू एस्टिमेट डेन्सिटी सो इन द नन पेरामिटिक टेक्निक्स आई कैन डिटारमाइन डेन्सिटी द डेन्सिटी अफ प्रबेबिलिटी अफ एक्स गिभेन ओमेगा आई देट इज द क्लास कंडिशनल डेन्सिटी आई कैन डिटारमाइन और डायरेक्टलि आई कैन डिटारमाइन द पस्टिरियर डेन्सिटी देट इज द प्रबेबिलिटी अफ ओमेगा आई गिभेन एक्स इन द नन पेरामिटिक टेक्निक्स आई उल भी एक्सप्लेनिंग टू पपुलर टेक्निक्स वन इज द पार्जन उन्डो टेक्निक एंड अनदार वन इज द के नियरेस्ट नेबर टेक्निक सो टूडे आई उल एक्सप्लेन द बेसिक कन्सेप्ट अफ नन पेरामिटिक टेक्निक्स सो लेट अस सी व्हाट इज द नन पेरामिटिक टेक्निक फर डेन्सिटी एस्टिमेशन सो टूडे आई एम गोयिंग टू डिसकस द कन्सेप्ट अफ नन पेरामिटिक method and that is actually the density estimation density estimation so that means in case of the non parametric methods uh, we can determine the density uh, but in case of the parametric estimation technique that already i have explained uh, the density from is available but we have to determine the values of the parameters in case of the non parametric methods we can estimate the density so that means what is the density so directly we can estimate density of this the class conditional density that is the likelihood this is a likelihood or directly we can determine the density of the probability of omega j given x so directly we can determine this and this is the concept of the the density estimation that means the density from is not known but we can estimate the density so how to determine the density so let us uh, explain this concept so what is the probability that that a vector vector is the feature vector x falls in the region r so region r is considered and what is the probability that a vector x falls in a region r so that probability i can write like this the probability is the region is r so dx bar and suppose this is equation number 1 so what is the meaning of this equation so this probability p is the smooth or i can say uh, it may be average averaged version of of the density function so this probability is the average version of the density function so based on this i am uh, writing the equation equation number 1 so we are considering n number of samples n samples we are considering n number of samples we are considering the samples are suppose x1 x2 these are the samples and these samples are in the region particular region suppose r so suppose we are considering any arbitrary region the region is r and in this region i am considering these are the samples x1 x2 so these are the samples in the within the region r so these are the samples in the region r so now i want to determine the probability that k points falls in the region r so the probability that 
k number of points, only k points we are considering, k sample points fall in R is given by probability of k and k probability of k p to the power k 1 minus p n minus k. So, total number of samples we are considering n and that means in this case what we are considering. So, only k number of points out of n. So, total number of points is n. So, the probability that k number of points fall in the region, the region is R. So, that I am determining. So, this is actually the binomial distribution. This is a binomial distribution we are considering. So, I can say this is the equation number 2. So, let us move to the next slide. So, from the previous slide, we obtained that the probability that k number of points fall in a region R is given by this is the binomial distribution n k probability of k 1 minus p n minus k. So, this was the equation number 2. So, already we have defined. Now, expected value value of k is given by expected value of k is given by that is n p and that I can say it is equation number 3. That is the binomial distribution for k points very sharply present in the mean. So, we are considering the binomial distribution and in this case we are getting the k number of peaks about the mean. So, this is the expected value of k we can determine like this from the equation number 3. Now, let us consider the maximum likelihood estimation ML estimation maximum likelihood estimation of p is equal to theta. So, theta already I told you this is a parameter vector. So, maximum likelihood estimation of p is equal to theta. So, what we have to consider? We have to maximize the likelihood function. The likelihood function is probability of k given theta. So, theta is the, the parameter vector. So, if I take maximum of this, so we will be getting the estimated value of theta. So, it will be equal to k divided by n and that is approximately equal to p that is approximately equal to p. So, maximum likelihood estimation of p is equal to theta we can determine and what we are considering we are maximizing the likelihood function the maximize uh, the probability of k given theta and we are estimating this value. So, estimated value of theta the theta hat is equal to k divided by n that is equal to p. So, this k by n because we are getting the ratio k by n that is a good estimate good estimate for the probability probability p and the probability density function probability density function this p. So, you can see that uh, what is the probability the probability we are getting that k divided by n that is the probability. So, what is n? n is the total number of samples what is k? So, number of sample points falling within the region the region is r. So, n is the total number of samples I am repeating this. So, total number of sample we are considering it is e is equal to n and k is nothing but the number of sample points within the region r. So, that is the k. So, if I compute the k divided by n that is nothing but the probability the probability we are getting. So, this density is continuous and the region r is very small r is so small so that this density does not 
the density does not vary significantly within it. So, that means, we are considering the region is very very small and so, the density does not vary significantly within the region. So, that is why I can write the probability p and region r is considered that is d x dash that is approximately equal to because this density is almost constant and I am getting the volume. So, what you can see in this equation, in this equation you can see this density is constant. So, I am taking it out from the integration and if you see the remaining one that is the region r we are considering and dx we are considering that is nothing but the volume. So, I can write this x, x is a sample point, x is a point within r within the region r and v is the volume enclosed by r enclosed by the region r. So, we are considering v is the volume enclosed by the region r. So, in the equation number 4 that already I have explained that the density I can consider as constant because the region is very small. So, the density does not uh, vary significantly within the region. So, I can consider it as a constant. So, this is a constant and after this if you see this integration. So, d x dash and that is nothing but the volume. So, this is the volume. So, we are getting the, the equation number 4. So, move to the next slide. So, now we can combine uh, the combining equation 1, 3 and 4 combining equation 1 I think I can write equation 1 again 3 and 4. So, what is the equation number 1? So, already I have defined the equation number 1. What is the equation number 1? The equation number 1 is I can write this is a probability region R this was the equation number 1. After this the equation number 3 the equation number 3 was uh, that expected value of k that is equal to n p that is equation number 3. So, this was the equation number 1 this is the equation number 3 and what is the equation number 4? The equation number 4 is equal to region it is considered. So, d x dash and that is approximately equal to the density into volume. So, this is equation number 4. So, considering 1, 3 and 4, so all these equations we are considering. So, we can determine the density, the density is nothing but, the density is nothing but or I can say it is approximately equal to, approximately equal to k divided by n and divided by v. So, we have this. So, we are getting this expression, this is the expression for the density. Now, this is the important expression for the density. The density is nothing but the k divided by n, that is the k by n ratio divided by volume. Now, let us consider the equation number 4. The what is the justification of the equation number 4? The equation number 4 already uh, we have explained that equation number 4 uh, the region we have considered is a very small region and that is why the density does not change changes significantly. So, we obtain this expression. So, this expression we obtain in equation number 4 this is the equation number 4. So, what is the justification of the equation number 4? this density is continuous and the region already I told you the region is very very small the region R or I can say the region region R 
is so small that this density density does not vary significantly within the region R within the region R. So, that is the concept already I have explained. So, now because of this condition uh, this density is constant it is a constant and so it is a constant so it is not a part of the summation. So, we can take it out from the integration. So, it is not a part of the summation. So, this expression 4 I can write like this So, this I can consider like this, this density and, and suppose we are considering the, the function mu r. So, what is mu r now in this case? This mu r, this mu r it may be a surface in the Euclidean space Euclidean space r square. So, it may be a surface in the Euclidean space r square the two dimensional space. So, if I consider a three dimensional space it will be a volume in the Euclidean space. Euclidean space r cube that is the three dimensional space and if I consider the high dimensional it will be if I consider high dimensional it will be a hyper volume in the Euclidean space Euclidean space r to the power n. So, high dimensional space we are considering and corresponding to this, this mu r will be a hyper volume for the Euclidean space r to the power n. So, we have these cases. So, if I consider two dimensional case then it will be a surface, if I consider a three dimensional space then it will be a volume and if I consider a high dimensional space then it will be a hyper volume. So, moving to the next slide. So, this density is constant. So, that is I can write this density at x is equal to density at x dash that is constant. So, I can write like this. because the density is constant because the region is very very small and this is volume. If I consider that Euclidean space r cube r to the power 3. So, 3 dimensional case it will be a volume. So, that is why from this you can see the density is given by or approximately it is given by the ratio k by n divided by v. So, this is the estimate for the density. So, this is the explanation of the equation number 4 and from this we can determine the density. So, that already I have defined. So, this is the expression for the unknown density. Now, let us see the conditions for the convergence. So, what are the conditions for the convergence? Because I have to estimate the density. So, one important point is the conditions for convergence, the conditions for convergence. So, this density I can obtain, it is obtained 
only if only if this volume V approaches zero. So density is obtained that is the density is obtained only the volume is very very small. So that is the the condition. So that means mathematically I can write the limit the density and volume tends to 0 and suppose volume is very very small. So, it cannot enclose any number of samples and then in this case if I consider n is fixed suppose if I consider if n is fixed this condition we are considering if n is fixed this is an important condition then if the volume is very very small then what will happen it cannot enclose any number of samples. So, that is why k is equal to 0. So, corresponding to this the density will be the estimate of the density will be 0. So, I am repeating this case what we are considering this the number of sample that is n is fixed. If n is fixed and the volume is very very small that condition already we have explained the volume should be very very small. So, that is why it cannot enclose any number of samples. So, that is why the k is equal to 0. So, k is equal to 0 means the meaning is the k is equal to 0 meaning that is no samples are included included in region R. So, this case I can consider as the uninteresting case because in this case uh, the density is equal to 0. So, I can say it is an uninteresting case. uninteresting case. So, the no samples are included in the region. So, that is why k is equal to 0 and the estimate of the density is equal to 0. So, let us move to the next slide. So, another condition is suppose uh, suppose again if I consider limit v tends to 0 the volume is very very small, but k is not equal to 0 the density the estimate of the density will be infinite. That means, we are considering n is fixed, n is fixed the number of samples are fixed. In this case also we are considering n is fixed. Corresponding to this k is not equal to 0 that means, corresponding to this the estimate diverges. So, corresponding to this I can write estimate, estimate of the density estimate diverges. So, I can say it is nothing but the uninteresting case, uninteresting, uninteresting case. So, if I consider the k is not equal to 0, then also the density will be infinite. So, it will be very high. So, these two conditions I am considering. So, that means, if I consider n is fixed and volume is very, very small. So, for these two cases, k is equal to 0 and k is not equal to 0. You can see in one case I am getting 0 the estimate of the density and in another case when k is not equal to 0 the estimate of the density is infinite very high. So, that is why to consider these two cases what we have to consider one condition is volume V needs to volume needs to approach 0. So, that means, the volume should be very very small and what is actually the variance? The variance is the ratio this ratio of k divided by n this is, the, this is called the variance. The variance is the ratio k by n and now we are considering the unlimited number of samples many many samples infinite number of samples unlimited number of samples so that means n is very very high unlimited number of samples so earlier we considered the n is fixed so corresponding to n is fixed we have these two conditions in one condition 
the density the estimated density is equal to 0 and in another case the density is very very high infinity. So, these are uninteresting case. So, that is why what we are considering the volume should be very very small and we are considering unlimited number of samples unlimited number of samples we are considering and the variance is the ratio of k divided by n. So, what we are doing now form I am forming sequence of regions sequence of regions the regions are r 1 suppose some of the regions r 1 r 2 like this containing containing the samples the sample is suppose x. So, we are considering the large number of samples we are considering and we are considering the sequence of regions and containing the, the sample the sample is x that is a feature vector. So, in earlier case what we have considered we are considering a region region is suppose the volume is v and n is the total number of samples. So, these are the sample so, these are the sample points. So, out of all these sample points we are considering the k number of sample points within this particular volume that we have considered. So, n is basically the n is the total number of samples and v is a volume I am considering and k is the number of samples within this particular volume that we have considered. Now, in this case we are considering the sequence of regions r 1 r 2 like this containing the samples. So, the, so the first region first region it contains first region contains only one sample second region contains two samples and so on. So, like this we are considering number of regions the first region contains one sample the second region contains two number of samples and like this we are considering the number of regions. So, let us move to the next slide. So, now we are considering V n V n is the volume of the region R n. So, we are considering the regions R 1 R 2 like this. So, corresponding to a region R n the volume is V n and corresponding to this k n number of samples k n number of samples falling in the region falling within the region R n. Okay. So, what we are considering the V n is the volume corresponding to the region R n and k n is the number of samples falling in the region R n. So, that is we are considering. So, I am repeating this corresponding to the region R n the volume is V n and if I consider three dimensional case it will be a simple volume. If I consider the high dimensional case then in this case it will be hyper volume. So, k n number of samples within the region R n. So, that we are considering. So, this density n th density n th density that is the be the est be the n at estimate n at estimate for the actual density actual density is this. So, we are estimating that is the n at estimate for the actual density. So, from the previous equation so, from the previous equation this n at estimate of the density actual density will be k n divided by n and divided by v n. So, this already I have explained. So, this is the estimate for the density and now we are considering the n at estimate of the actual density. So, this is the estimate for the density. Now, we have to see the conditions so that this n at estimate of the density converges to the actual density. So, that means I can write necessary conditions should apply 
should apply so that the nth estimate of the density, so it is the nth estimate of the density converges to converges to the actual density, actual density is this, the actual density. So, we have to see what are the conditions so that the nth estimate of the density converges to the actual density that is the actual density is this. So, now what are the conditions? The condition is number one condition limit v n is equal to 0 n tends to infinity. That means, what is the meaning of this? So, we are considering large number of samples, the samples n tends to infinity, large number of samples and the volume is very, very small. So, if I consider the large number of samples, the volume may be very, very small. So, that is the first condition for the convergence. The second condition is limit k n, n tends to infinity and that is equal to infinity. So, the meaning is if the volume is very, very small, there is a possibility that this small volume even can enclose the infinite number of samples because we are considering infinite number of samples. So, the volume is very, very small. So, this is volume is very, very small. Then this small volume can also include uh, some of the samples, the high number of samples because we are considering very large number of samples. So, large number of samples we are considering, these are the samples. So, very large number of samples we are considering and if the volume is very, very small, even in this case, it can enclose the high number of samples points. So, I am repeating this, the volume is very, very small and number of samples, the n is very, very high. So, even in this case also, this small volume can enclose many, many samples, the infinite number of samples. That is the explanation of the equation number 2, the number 2 equation means the condition number 2. And number 3, the k n is very, very high. So, I can say the limit k n divided by n, n tends to infinity, n is very, very high, then it will be approaching to 0 because n is very high as compared to k n. So, that is why uh, this limit k n divided by n that should be equal to 0. So, these are the important conditions for the convergence that is the convergence of the nth density to the actual density. So, I am repeating this condition, these conditions are very important. The first condition you can see, I am considering the number of samples are very, very high, that is the n is number of samples are very, very high and in this case the volume may be very, very small, the v n is equal to 0, the volume may be very, very small, that is the condition number 1. Condition number 2 n is very, very high, the number of samples are very, very high. Then in this case also, this small volume, I can expect that it can enclose many, many samples, the infinite number of samples. So, that is why I am writing limit n tends to infinity, k n is equal to infinity. That means, even this small volume can enclose the many, many samples, the k n number of samples. That is the condition number 2. And condition number 3, the n is very, very high, n tends to infinity. The variance, the variance is nothing but the k n divided by n, that will be equal to 0, that approach is 0. Because as compared to k n, the n is very, very high. So, that is why the variance, the variance is the ratio k n divided by n, it approaches 0. So, these are the important conditions for the convergence. Now, let us uh, consider two approaches for uh, estimation of the density. So, already I told you uh, two popular techniques, one is called the Parsian window technique and another one is the k nearest neighbor techniques. So, now uh, move to the next slide. So, what are the two approaches? Uh, so, two approaches are there, two popular approaches, two approaches. One is the the Parsian window technique. Parsian window. So, in this approach, what is the case? Shrink, what is the Parsian window? Shrink and initial region where 
where the volume V n is equal to 1 by root n. So, n is already I told you n is nothing but the number of samples and V n is the volume corresponding to the region R n. So, in this case what we are considering and that is the volume is fixed, the volume is fixed, we are fixing the volume. So, suppose this is the volume, the volume V n corresponding to the region R n and these are the sample that is a k n number of samples we are considering. So, k n number of samples and what is n? n means the total number of samples. So, these are the samples. So, n means the total number of samples. So, the volume is fixed and we are determining the ratio uh, because for the estimation of the density you can see we have to determine k n divided by n divided by v n. So, this ratio k n divided by n we can determine and from this expression the expression is this expression. So, from this expression I can determine the density. The volume is fixed what I have to determine I have to count the number of sample points within this particular volume that means I have to count k n. So, count k n. So, how many samples within this particular volume we have to determine and based on this we can determine the density and this density we can determine. So, this is the fundamental concept of the Parzen window technique. Number 2 technique number 2 that is called a KNN technique, K nearest neighbor technique. So, that also I will be explaining the K nearest neighbor, KNN technique. So, in this case the KN is fixed that is Kn is suppose root over n that is actually data dependent because n is the number of samples. So, it is I can say it is data dependent So, what I have to consider specify specify k n as a function of function of n. So, already I have explained that is a k n is equal to root n. Okay. Now, what I have to consider now in this case I am fixing that k n, k n is fixed. I can say that out of this that means the k n is fixed. The volume v n is grown, the volume is increased until it encloses k n neighbors neighbors of the x x is the that sample. So, this is actually the the concept is it is called the this concept is the k n nearest neighbor estimation method. estimation method. So, in my next slide I will be explaining what is the KNN method. So, in the KNN method the K nearest neighbor method what we are considering KNN method the KN is fixed this is fixed and we are defining KN is suppose root n that is actually the data dependent. So, for example, in this case suppose KN is suppose 5. So, we have to grow the region or we have to increase the region so that it encloses the 5 number of samples. So, suppose we are considering a region this region is suppose R this region is R 1. So, this region R 1 encloses only the 1 number of sample. After this I am growing the region that means I am increasing the region. So, suppose the region is now R 2 this is the R 2. So, it encloses suppose the 2 number of samples. So, like this I have to grow the region and like this we have to grow the region and corresponding to this suppose the region is suppose R 5. So, this region R 5 it encloses the region R 5 encloses 
the five number of samples. This five is actually the what is the five? Five is nothing but k n is equal to five. We are considering k n is equal to five. So this region five considered or this region five encloses the five number of samples. So we have to increase the region. We have to grow the region. So corresponding to this region R five, we can determine. We know the volume. The volume is V n. So from this information, we can determine the density. The density is nothing but the nth density is nothing but the k n divided by n divided by v n. So you can see in the k n n method, what we are considering the k n is fixed, and what we are determining we are determining the volume, so that it encloses the k n number of samples. So we are growing the region, so that it encloses the k n number of samples, and corresponding to this I can determine the volume. And from that volume information and from this KN information, and we know what is N, the total number of samples, we can determine uh, the density. So the, you can estimate the density. So this is the K nearest neighbor technique. In case of the Parjan window technique, what we are considering the volume is fixed. In the Parjan window technique, already I have explained. So Parjan window technique. So the volume we have considered a fix. Volume is also data dependent, so I can say it is fixed. And what we have to determine? We have to determine how many samples within this particular volume. So we have to determine the Kn, and based on this, we can determine the density. We can determine. So you can see the fundamental difference between the K nearest neighbor technique and the Parjan window technique. So in this class, uh, I explain the fundamental concept of the non-parametric estimation. So in the non-parametric estimation, I have explained two approaches. One is the Parjan window technique, and another one is the K-nearest neighbor technique. And what is the fundamental difference between these two techniques? In case of the Parjan window technique, the volume is fixed, and we have to determine the number of samples within this particular volume. That is the Parjan window technique. In case of the K-nearest neighbor technique, what we are considering? The K n is fixed. That is the data dependent. So, for example, we considered K n may be equal to root over n. That is the data dependent. The K n is fixed, and we have to find the volume. That means we have to grow the region so that it encloses the K n number of samples. And corresponding to this, we can determine the volume of the region, and from that information, we can determine the density. So, these are uh, two techniques. Two approaches for estimating the density. So, in my next class, I will be explaining the concept of the Parjan window. So, let me stop here today. Thank you.